Welcome to Virginia City. Today, we take a step back in time to find out why it's called the richest place on earth. It all dates back to 1859, when a man named Henry Comstock discovered the most valuable deposit of silver ore ever recorded, which became known as the Comstock Lode. With more than 100 mines in the Comstock area, seven million tons of silver ore were produced, equating to more than $600 million in both silver and gold in today's money. Nearly all the passages have been closed for over a century, but here at the Collar Mine, you can stop on by and take a guided tour. Just ask for Jay. How did you get into this business? I was a collector of mining, and I started collecting mines. And so it's just part of collecting. This is an antique. Mines are an antique. This is the earliest part of Virginia City, 1859. This is the only mine left in town to see the Comstock load in. We're headed through the attic now, the portal, and we're headed down into the drift itself. The Collar Mine was one of the leading producers on the Comstock. Over the course of its 80 years in operation, miners blasted and carted out some $17 million in silver and gold. Many traveled from all across the country to seek their fortune deep in this mine, but it was backbreaking work. I can't imagine eight hours a day being in there, but the miners, they had dedication. Outside the mine shaft, you'll find tons of historical artifacts on display that tell the stories of what it was like to work in the Collar Mine. As you're coming in from Reno, from the north up here, you're coming up Garga Grade on that long climb. You come in first, you see Virginia City in the distance, you cross the Sierra. This whole 10 year of climbing the hill, they thought it was a gold strike, but when they got up the top, it was a silver strike, the wow. largest in history of America here. Here you are at the Grass Valley level of the Collar Mine, William Collar started in 1861. He laid out the claim in 1859, and we start our journey inward 400 feet into the fault of the Comstock load. The miners were the richest people in town. They had so much money to spend, that's why the town formed for the miners. This was a mining empire, Virginia City was. No, it really was. And to see the fact that you guys have everything still here and some of that miner life, mm -hmm. and you have right next to me some things that the miners would typically wear. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, if they, well, once they got the carbide, this would be their carbide container with water. They would have a belt on, and behind me here are the carbide lamps. They came along in about 1910, 1915. But first, the miners worked with the candlesticks, okay? These are candlesticks, miner candlesticks with the wax candles in them right here. It's crazy to think about miner life and using candles. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only do so much until your candle's out, then you better get back out. If you were a miner, you had three candles a day. There's a piece right behind me. Can you tell me a little bit about it? That's a stamp mill. It's for crushing rock. It was invented in Europe hundreds of years ago. Here we have a hit and miss engine hoist. Probably 19 teens, 20s right here. Behind me over here is a two piston pneumatic or steam hoist. I love these things right here. They're archaic and very early. And okay. how many people would typically work on this machine? You'd have a hoist operator and a brake operator. The same person would run the forward and reverse. This would be the drum brake here to slow it down. And this would be your spool with maybe 400 to 1,000 feet of cable on it, okay? Wow, so it goes real deep. This here is an Ellis ball mill, probably 1920s. It didn't have any gears or cranks, but look how easy it is. You can turn it by hand. You have the pulverized gold going inside here. It's crushing even further below. You're adding weight in this barrel right here to get onto it. You're adding water, and it's bringing the gold out at the end. This is called an Ellis Gold Mill. Can I try? Sure. I've never seen one of these in real life before. You don't see them. I think it's so unique. I love the fact that you're so passionate about it and teach others that are visiting from all over the world to come here. Thank you so much, Jay. I appreciate you for coming. Spirit in Nevada is proudly brought to you by Richard Harris Law Firm. 
For more information, visit richardharrislaw.com. Watch new episodes of Spirit in Nevada on the channels listed below.